All right, number four deals with an airplane. Since I have very little, little ability, my airplane looks like a box. So an airplane is traveling with a speed of 150 meters per second, and it completes a loop-de-loop -loop with a radius of 500 meters. So in this case... Five hundred meter radius. Speed is one hundred and fifty meters per second. Didn't really say if this thing was going clockwise or counterclockwise, so I'm just picking one. Wouldn't matter at all. Okay, so loop to loop though. Notice loop to loops are vertical, and that's going to matter because now we're not in outer space, so we have gravity to worry about, and we're going to assume that he's not too high in the atmosphere here. That he's somewhat close to the surface of the Earth. Uh, and that way we can use gravity equals 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, and in this case, got a couple questions. What is the normal force of the seat on the pilot, whose mass is 80 kilograms, while at the top of the loop? And then we're gonna ask while at the bottom of the loop. So in this case, we got bottom of the loop, there's a man, he's in a seat in the plane. At the top of the loop though, what's gonna be true about this man? He's upside down. Great. All right, so let's start at the top of the loop. We're going to do a free body diagram for the man. What forces are acting on the man? Yeah, he's got his own weight, which is mg. Uh, there's no rope on this one, so no tension to worry about or anything. What other, what if, and which way is the normal force point? Ooh, careful. What's, it's the seat hitting him. And the seat is above him, so it's actually pushing down as well. So the normal force here also points down. Cool. Anything else? No, that's it. So in this case, we'll do some of the forces. In this case, some of the forces, we've got a normal force and an mg. And the sum of the forces adds up to what? Ooh, it's towards the center of the circle. That's the radial direction. So in this case, it's going to add up to mv squared over r. Now I got a question, though. Action. Which way does the normal force point, up or down? Down. So mg, weight, down. And the overall centripetal towards the center of the circle, which all happens to be down. So these all point down, which means I can do what? Make them all positive or make them all negative? So convention would say make them all negative. Well, I'm just going to keep them all positive. Same diff in this case. But notice, yes, we could have made them all negative, and then we just multiplied them all by negative 1 and been fine. Cool. So in this case, then, <clears throat> uh, now we want to find that normal force. So in this case, normal force is going to equal mv squared over r minus mg. And now we can start plugging some numbers in here. So he weighs 80 kilograms. Don't worry, Chris, I won't be doing this one in my head. Okay, excellent, my bad. How many of you guys have ever done a loop-de-loop -loop in an airplane? Most of us really haven't, yeah. So how many of you have done a loop-de-loop -loop on a roller coaster, though? Yeah, where do you feel heavier, at the top or at the bottom of the loop-de-loop? -loop? At the bottom. So we're expecting now, intuitively, that our normal force is kind of analogous if we were sitting on a scale. What would it read and stuff like that? So it's analogous to your apparent weight at that point. And since you feel heavier at the bottom, when we solve for the normal force down here, it should be higher than this guy right here. So force is acting on the pilot at the bottom of the loop-de-loop -loop now for the second part of this question. Yeah, we still got a weight pointing down. Now the normal force points up. Cool, and that's it. And centripetal points towards the center of the circle, which in this case happens to be up. 
So what that means is that our normal force and our centripetal have to have the same sign and mg the opposite. And I'm going to make up positive and down negative. And so in this case, some of the forces is normal force minus mg, and it equals mv squared over r. And again, in this case, mv squared over r, the centripetal points toward the center. So now we'll end up with mv squared over r plus mg instead of minus. We can definitely see this is going to end up as a larger quantity. I'm going to ask you that in a, again in a second here. <laughs> Four thousand what? Three hundred and fourteen. Awesome. And the question number five says a wheel with a radius of 0.5 meters rotates from rest with an angular acceleration of four radians per second squared. And the question is, what is the magnitude of the total acceleration experienced by a piece of gum stuck to the outer edge of the wheel? at t equals 0.5 seconds, at t equals 0.5 seconds. Okay, so we're going to put a little piece of gum on this thing. So right at the edge of the wheel, stuck to it. So by the way, I should also alter the question here. The wheel here is turning horizontally. So I'm not going to have a, a gravity part to think about in this motion. So this is transplanted onto the board, but it's really a horizontal rotation. I will have to alter the question to reflect that as well. All right, so we've got this lovely piece of gum here, and the question is, at t equals 0 0.5 seconds, what is the overall magnitude of the acceleration? So if we look here, so this piece of gum is going to be somewhere rotating here on this thing, and what kind of acceleration does it have? Well, it definitely has centripetal pointing towards the center. So in this case, let's just assume the motion goes this way. It's not said clockwise or counterclockwise, the way I've drawn it or anything like that, so I'm just picking one. So, but it also had an angular acceleration, which means it also has a tangential acceleration as well. So this is your centripetal, but this is your tangential. So notice this is not uniform circular motion because we have an angular acceleration. It's not constant angular velocity. So the question is, right at t equals 0.5 seconds, what is the total acceleration? And we're going to have two components here. And what are we going to have to do to get the total acceleration? Atom is vector components to get the overall vector acceleration here. <coughs> so let's deal with the centripetal first. What's the definition of centripetal acceleration again? Yeah, it's v squared over r. So we're going to figure out what v is at t equals 0.5 seconds. So in this case, we can figure out what omega is after 0.5 seconds based on knowing alpha here. And then how do I turn omega into v? R. Multiply by r, r omega, yep. So in this case, if the acceleration is 4 radians per second, per second, then, and we start from rest, what's the angular velocity after half a second? two radians per second. Cool? So if you want to see that in an equation, we essentially did again omega initial, I'm sorry, omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. Times half a second. And after half a second, moving at two radians per second. So what is our V then? Yeah. So half a meter times two radians per second, and our velocity, our tangential velocity at the point is 1.0 meters per second. We'll plug that in to get our centripetal acceleration. Ooh, I'm not looking. F I'm looking for the 
overall acceleration right at that time point, at t equals 0.5 seconds. Not, not what was the average from zero to 0.5, but right at t equals 0.5, right at that instant, what is the overall acceleration? Cool. So in this case, what do we get for a centripetal acceleration here? Good. All right, so that's our centripetal. Now we need the tangential here. <clears throat> How do I get a tangential acceleration? Well, I'll get it from the angular acceleration. What's the relationship between tangential acceleration and angul angular acceleration? A equals R. Yeah, A equals R alpha. Radius is 0.5 meters. Alpha, 4.0 radians per second squared. That gets us our tangential. That's 2.0 meters per second squared. And so now we've got our two components here, which both happen to equal two meters per second squared. And they're 90 degrees apart. So in this case, if we added them in tip to tail fashion, we'd have one say like at this instant, if that's the particular instant there, and then tip to tail. And so the overall vector component would be Vector sum would be that guy. And each of the legs is two meters per second squared. Awesome. So, and what did that come up to again? Sorry? Uh, 2.8 uh, Good, so squared eight, 2.83 mm -hmm. meters per second squared. Cool, so we're just finding the magnitude. We'd have trouble finding the direction if I'd have to define a whole bunch of other things like it was horizontal and where around the circle did it start and all that stuff, which would be a big pain in the butt. So just the magnitude in this case. Cool, if we did define the initial conditions a little better around the rotational motion this was and stuff, so how would you get the angle for the total acceleration? Yeah, you use the inverse tangent. So in this case, an inverse tangent of one component over the other. In this case, since they're equal, we'd find out that the angle was 45 degrees, but relative to what? Because I haven't defined anything. So we really couldn't take it any further than that in this case. But that's why we only asked for the magnitude.